Happy Friday. Um, my name is Sean Womack. Uh, I am the uh, <coughs> chair of the Marching Percussion uh, Division of PAS. And on behalf of PAS, I want to welcome you to uh, Fundamental Friday, something that the fine folks at PAS have started to bring us while we're all stuck at home. And uh, going to welcome our guest tonight. Mr. Jeff Queen, the Southwest District Manager for Yamaha Corporation, legendary snare drummer. Uh, welcome, Jeff. How you doing? Doing great, Sean. How are you? Doing great, man. Doing great. Uh, so awesome. So if you're tuning in, uh, if you tuned in last time, uh, if you've got sticks and a pad, and we're going to turn it over to my man, Jeff, and we're going to have a ton of fun and drum. If you guys have any questions, uh, drop them in for us, and we'll get them to Jeff as we go through. Uh, we'll maybe stop and get some. We'll definitely get some at the end. Um, but, yeah, uh, grab some sticks and pads. Let's have some fun. If you got some questions, throw them in there. Jeff, take it away, buddy. I right, hope everybody, first and foremost, hope everybody is safe and healthy in their worlds. Uh, man, what a crazy time. Pretty cool to be able to connect virtually with everybody uh, doing this. So, um what I'm going to cover today are a handful of one-handed exercises that do a lot of motions that cover a lot of different things. Uh, specifically, we're going to cover ones that work with flam taps, with paradiddles, paradiddle diddles, and flam accents. And depending on how much time we have, we'll get into a couple other variations with them. This is uh, pretty fundamental warm-ups that I use with every group that I've taught. Uh, it's something that um, has been an integral part of every program I've ever worked with, really. So kind of a little bit of background, too. I started drumming in drum corps in 1989. It was on the East Coast, and sort of the East Coast to me at that time was a little bit more sort of muscular in terms of the way that they drummed, a little bit less finesse, maybe, uh, especially in the group that I was in at that time. And then I shortly thereafter, in 1990, moved out actually where I live now uh, and marched with VK and kind of got the West Coast uh, vibe, if you will. And the way that, that things were started to be taught to me out here, they were, they were taking this kind of one-handed approach. So the first time I actually got exposed to some stuff like this was through a gentleman by the name of Marty McDonald, who was teaching at VK at the time, um, and then ended up working with a guy named Dave DeLulo at the Velvet Knights, who was from Santa Clara, and uh, marched Blue Devils in 86. Then I went through a couple other different drum corps, but ended up landing at North Texas in 1993, uh, with Paul Rennick and Tom Float, and they were a big proponents of these types of things too. So I just found that it works really, really, really well. Um, uh, uh, like I said, other than timing exercises, your general roles and things like that, this this sort of sweep that I'm going to cover here in terms of these exercises have been kind of a staple of programs. And even for me now, as I continue to play, it gets me really warm and uh, kind of gets me into the groove of playing and, and works through a handful of different motions. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to jump to is the exercises here. Um, this is all kind of one-handed breakdowns. So it's going to be actually that other page. Um, there we go. Uh, so this is hugs and flam tap buildup. And a lot of this could be things that you've already dealt with, but I'm going to hopefully throw some variations to it as well. So with the hug is this, right? So if a student doesn't know molar as well, this is one of the first things that I do to try to teach molar. So I really look at this as one motion for the three sounds. So I think of this as sort of a quarter note motion, and then I'm able to use my fingers or my thumb and my index and my left hand, really let the hand open up and just decrescendo three notes. So the format of this is right hand for four counts, left hand for four counts, right, left, and then a release, okay? So here we go. We're going to play through that first exercise there. I want you to really think about letting things decrescendo and really think of that one motion. So if you just had to do this by relaxing your fulcrum, letting your fingers and your palm open up, you'd get that hug out of it. Here we go. One, two, three, and. Let me do that one more time. So now what we're going to do is add a four. We're obviously playing groups of three uh, in all of that, but we're going to add a group of four on beat four. So one E and two E and three E and four E and a one. And that's going to go back and forth. Same format, right, left, right, left. Here we go. One, two, ready, 
Yeah. Oh, my computer just went to sleep, so I want to make sure everybody can still see me. Here we go again. One, two, ready, and... So even playing that four, I'm trying to feel like I'm doing one motion, right? So what I'm actually doing to keep that one motion feel, I'm just squeezing my fulcrum just a little bit tighter so I can get four notes out versus three. Right? One more time. One, two, around, and. So a version I like to do with this one is to take that and go like 4-2-1 with it. And if we're not familiar with 4-2-1 or kind of the grid, we're basically going to play the fours one time through. So four counts on your right, four counts on your left, and then two counters, which would be play that twice. And then the ones would be all fours. Okay, so all the way through four, two, one again would be fours are this. Then right into the twos. And then the ones, which is just all straight fours. Okay, here we go with that. One, two, one, two, ready, four, two, one. Again. Hopefully that's getting you pretty warmed up too. You should be feeling a lot of goodness in your fingers and your hand, really getting a good full hand warm up with that. One more tweak to this one. Uh, and what we're going to do there now is take the four or the ones at the end and do four sets of four and then four sets of threes and then a set of twos. So the tag at the end is four, 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 three, 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 two, two, release. Just that. One, two, just the end. And the doubles at the end, I'm really trying to get what I would kind of call bad doubles in that sense because they're going to take that hug motion and that kind of decrescendo motion with that. All right? All the way through, four, two, one with the fours. One, two, ready, and. One more time. Okay. One other variation to this before we move into the actual buildup of the flam tap, which is what this motion is giving us. It's the one hand of a flam tap. Uh, we can do like a 15, 16 variation. So all we're doing is just cutting off the last 16th note of the measure. And that three, you basically get a back-to-back -back three. And this particular motion, too, is how I would approach French rolls or threes, right? Those types of guys. Uh, so this one gets a good breakdown of that. Um, straight up exercise, just going to be, again, 15, 16. So we're just cutting off that 16th note at the end would be this, right? So let's just do that right, left, right, left. One, two, ready, and. Again. We 
can take that and do it four, two, one, and uh, it can be kind of fun too. So you get that turnaround then in the end. Okay, here we go. So the whole thing with that, uh, we should be able to do it four, two, one, straight up. One, two, and one, two, ready, and. Twos. Again, two, all the while feeling that one motion for the whole thing, right? One motion. Okay, so within that one skill set, we've worked two different skills, really, or three, really, with the four. Uh, we've done the group of three, and this motion by itself, which is just a hug motion, which is what it is for flam taps, the one-handed version of a flam tap. We've done the four. And then we've, in a way, worked the French roll or threes by putting those back to back. So down to the next uh, line there, our next system, it's actually the buildup of a flam tap. These rods keep coming out here. Um, so the idea here is sort of set the lead hand in motion and don't let it change. So this motion is going to be happening the whole time. Almost think of it like a ride pattern uh, on a drum set, right? That it's just your time, it's what's happening, and you're embellishing things with your left hand. This is also a great way to start to teach a little bit of independence. Certainly in the rudimental world, independence is not something that is, is we, we talk about a ton because we use both hands uh, at, at most times together. Uh, certainly drum set, piano, things like that. We start to get in marimba, things with independence. So this is a good way to start to at least think along those lines. And I would challenge you as you get more comfortable with these to be able to think either just the filled in hand, which is sort of the embellished hand, uh, or just the lead hand and maybe be able to sing that the entire time while you're then embellishing. So first measure is what we've been doing all the long. Then we're just gonna add a grace note with the left hand. And add the grace. And we're gonna add the grace note and the primary note in the left hand. So the left hand ends up just doing box basically, or accent tap there. Uh, third measure would be this. And then the fourth measure is just straight up flam taps. Again, trying to feel that motion the whole time. Okay, so let's take it all the way through on the right hand. Again, that lead hand motion stays the same the entire time. One, two, and flam tap build up. Take a second right now and work that off your left hand. Right? Work doing that whole same thing off your left. Give me a second to do that. Well, I'll try to shove that back in there. I don't think these were meant to be played on rubber. It's grabbing and pulling them out there. All right, let's try it off the left hand. Same thing, starting with that motion, keeping it the same, adding that. Here we go, a little slower. Two, one. Two, ready, and. Again. So one more thing that we can do with that is we can take kind of the one hand, one flam version or the two flam version and do that 421 as well. Uh, I find this to feel really good to my hands. So I'm going to take the two flam version and go right to left with it. So just the fours. So you have kind of that downstroke type motion or I call it control rebound motion with the hug there. And then you kind of have that free stroke that happens at the end of that, right, to get the turnaround. So just the fours again. And then the twos. And 
and then the ones. Okay, so let's try that. Four, two, one. I'm gonna switch implements here. Oh, screen went to sleep again. Note to self, change that setting next time. Here we go. One, two, four, two, one with the two. Bam. One more time. Okay, so those are a handful of variations that you can do with just that hogs motion. Really moves your hands in a lot of different ways. And right now your hands should feel pretty good uh, if you really even haven't been drumming today, just by getting all of those motions going with that too. Okay, moving down to the next one. This is Hux or Paradiddle Diddle build up. So uh, the next system there, and this just takes this motion, right, and builds up that Paradiddle Diddle. If we want to look at the root motion of this, it becomes just that buck, okay? And then we just drop in a note right before that. If we want to get into stroke types, that's down, tap up, right? Down, tap up, down, tap up, down, tap up, down, tap up, down. So this again in the, in the root form, right, left, right, left, and stop. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. So what we can do here now as sort of variations to this are all sort of parts of what the second system is. So if we look at the third measure in that next system in this exercise, it's basically one paradigm. Right? So what we're doing is, is filling it in on the front side of the diddle. So if I was in a line setting, we'd be doing these. we finish. So fill it in on the front. Okay. Um, so let's go do that. We're basically going to go right, right, then left, left with that. So we're going to do the root or the check first. Then fill it on the front. Then switch to the left. All right, here we go. One, two. Right and left. One more time. The other variation you can do with that is filling it in on the back, right? So if we were doing a one paradiddle, now we do sort of a, it's a weird sticking for a, a five stroke roll basically. And this turns into, one thing I found with this is to always try to keep that swing feel to it, right? Versus right? Try to keep that sort of lilt to it with that. Uh, with this one, we're just going to go on the right hand all the way through, then I'll stop and go left hand. So this is check, and then those, right? Four of each. One, two, on the right hand. Left hand. Right hand one more time. Left hand last time. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm kind of far away from my screen, so 
Looks like we're doing all right. Thanks everyone for tuning in. So now if we go down to the next system, that is the full paradiddle diddle buildup. So the same type of idea that we did with the flam tap buildup there. Uh, we want to keep that motion of this box motion going the whole time. Notice that this actually starts with box, right? Down, up, down, up, as far as the stroke type. Moves into the hucks. Embellish with that front side, whole thing. And again, with this, I try to keep that lilted, that sort of swing feel. So I'm always thinking of that upbeat as well. All right, all the way through on the right hand, this is that second system. One, two, starts with buck sand. Right? And what I'm trying to do too is keep those heights as well, right? I'm not doing that, right? It is a downstroke. I've got to use my back fingers, my pinky and my ring finger to really squeeze the stick. Not too hard, but just, I call it cushioning the stick actually, right? To cushion the stick so it stays down versus doing that. Off the left. One, two, ready, and. Back to the right one more time. Oops, start. It starts with bucks. One, two, ready, and. Left hand, last time on knees. Next one, question, newsflash. Any advice for getting my stick head more consistent and larger while keeping with tempo? Uh, first thing, that's kind of a, a two-folded question I would say. First one would be to only play at a height that you can stay in time with. So if you're like, say we're talking about this exact exercise and you're working on getting you know, a really big accent but you have still trouble staying in time with that, Play it here, right? And if that works, then you're doing good. The next way to do that is to move, go slower, and that should allow you to increase your stick height. And through doing both of those things, you might be able to get a little bit faster with that. One thing I think that if we look at skill sets, right, we can look at one height as sort of the beginning, and then really the first bridge to cross, um, you, people, some could consider it sort of bouncing the stick in doubles, Others could consider that playing really good two heights. So if we're taking the path of the next bridge, if you will, is two height stuff. Here's a couple of things that I do with that. Um, I do work dead strokes. So just getting the feel for what it, it's like to not let the stick up at all, right? To kind of force the stick into the head. What you realize is that you have to squeeze a little bit in the front and definitely use those back fingers. If we think of only holding onto the stick with these back fingers, it's not gonna bounce back up. If I only hold on with the front, it's gonna bounce back up. So we've gotta collectively use our whole hand there in the right hand uh, to not let that to happen. So I definitely feel my back fingers involved um, when I'm trying to work on my heights. But one thing you can do is play that dead stroke and then like a, a regular tap after. And you're gonna force yourself to feel what those fingers are doing uh, within that. Left hand, if we think about what the back fingers are, it's really your index finger uh, with that. Um, so the stick is going to come off of the index finger with that first, than anything. It's going to pivot off that, that webbing and the fulcrum back here, the V, and come up against that index finger. The thumb has a lot to do with that as well. So as we do that, in the left hand, we're going to use that thumb and index finger to force those heights down and make that death stroke happen with that. Okay. Whenever you struggle with anything, a great answer is go slower, okay? And that's exactly what you want to do. Just go slower with it and make sure that you are uh, playing at a tempo that you can, okay? Moving to Huck Diggas, which is the bottom two systems here, bottom three systems, really. But this one takes this group, puts this in 12-8, okay? Um, and takes that, I kind of think of the 
triplet buck in there, the group of three is what this is. Okay. So this one can get a little trickier. This is what flam accents are built off of. So let's do these, same format, four on the right, four on the left, rinse and repeat. Here we go. One, two, ready, and. Same thing we can do with these as we did with the paradiddle diddle one. We can fill it in on the front and then fill it in on the back. So filling it in on the front would be on the back. Okay. So let's actually do this one slightly different in terms of format. We're going to go check, fill it in on the front, check, fill it in on the back. And end. So all the way through on the right hand. And what this does is that this forces a timing issue in your left hand or the non-lead hand, okay, where we have uh, just placing of that tap. Okay. Actually, let's take this a step further where we go back to the check and then do both. So filled in, filled in on the front and the back. Okay, so check, fill it in on the front, check, fill it in on the back. Check, fill it in across the board. Here we go. One, two, ready, and check. Fill it in on the front. Check. Fill it on the back. Check. All of it. off the left. Front. Check. Back. Check. All of it. Okay. Those are fun ones that, again, should feel good but then also work some timing, get your brain involved there a little bit too. Moving down to the last bit of this page is the flam accent uh, buildup. So again, taking this one pattern and embellishing it as we go, right? Second measure, we're just adding that grace note. Third measure is usually the roughest. It changes the feel. Uh, so it changes from the long beat, if you will, to the shorter B of kind of does the eighth note subdivision in there, or dotted eighth technically in this case. Um, so that's a little bit funkier, but it's right, right, left, right, 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 left, right, 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 left, right for leading off the left. So this is taking the second and third measure of that, which would be doing that long B, then. And one way that you can make sure you're doing these exercises correctly, you could always put one hand on the rim, one hand on your leg, one hand on the drum, anything like that where you can isolate the sound of the one, um, the lead hand to make sure you're doing it the same. Another side note of this too, if we're, you know, I'm sort of saying that, that a flam tap is this, a paradiddle diddle is this, or a flam accent is this. Well, that's, obviously correct in the sense that that's what one hand is doing. This is quite an advanced way to learn these rudiments. Uh, this is not how I would teach a beginner or somebody who's just coming into contact with these rudiments. This is definitely some way that I would teach people that are very serious, that want to dig into it, very, you know, marching band, drum corps style, to get a lot better, a lot more consistent with it. Um, and again, starting to talk about some more advanced concepts of independence and those types of things as well. It wouldn't be like, hey, sixth grader, beginner drummer guy, play a paradiddle, and it's this. Right, way easier to teach the sticking 
and teach it in a, in a different format and then be able to do a deeper dive once you understand uh, what's going on. So uh, the third measure of this is one full flam accent, okay, followed by a tap, and then all the way through with the flam accents, okay? Let's try this all the way down. Okay, we'll go back here. Okay, one, two, keep the motion the same, and one. Add the grace. Primary note. One more tap. All of it. Take a second and do that off your left hand, right? So what I would do is hit probably that third measure and the fourth measure. Get a little cozy with that. Give you a second or two to run through that. I'll look at the questions. Okay. All right, let's give it a look on the left hand. Again, try to keep that motion the same the whole time. One, two, ready, and add the grace. Primary note. One more tap. Oh. And again, we had the question earlier about heights. This is definitely a downstroke type of motion, right? Okay, making sure that we're seeing those two separate heights with the whole thing, right? We want to see, really, ideally, you're seeing a grace note, a tap, and an accent, but that doesn't really happen. Um, we really do get that kind of three note thing, right? Three triple beat down the low end. Another way to learn some of the flam rudiments, and this is uh, certainly what I spent a lot of time doing, which was going super duper slow and playing true three height flam rudiments, where it would be grace note raises up to the tap, something along that line, right? So you really get the finesse of that in there, right? Same thing if we're looking at any other rudiment, you can go through that as well. I'm um, going to do one thing sort of off the cuff, and then I'll break down the exercise that's on the next page of this real quickly, and that'll kind of wrap it up. If I think of flam rudiments and I think of uh, sort of the motions that we want to go through, we've covered two of the main ones that I consider at least the main ones right now, which are control rebound, which are the flam taps, and downstroke, which are flam accents. So there's one that's kind of missing from that, which is inverts. So inverted motion where we're downstroking is high to low, control rebound is literally a decrescendo in that sense, controlling that rebound to get it to, to decrescendo. And then inverts are going low to high. So inverted flam tops. So the one-handed motion of that is right, one and a two and a three and a four. So we can take the exercise in the same format as all the root ones of these, Ba, ba, da, 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 go to the left. Let's try that. One, two, ready, and. Okay. And then you can take the same type of idea of building the whole rudiment up with the invert would be this. Primary note. Accent on the other hand. Okay. One of the tricks to inverts too is making an unnatural motion, that low to high kind of whippy motion. Some people would, would say they're using a lot of molar um, on the, uh, the invert. Uh, but making that feel natural is really a huge component of it. Uh, a kind of one other little concept here too. I remember when I was at North Texas and every time Tom Float would come in, he would have us play inverts and Swiss. So he would always just kind of do this. You would always check that out. And I would always ask him, why do you do that? Like he was like the third or fourth time he came in. And I'm like, why do you always check that out? And he would always talk about the juxtaposition of motions. So if you can start to move in between all of these and some of the more control rebound things, the more downstroke things, 
the more fluid, sort of flowy, one-heighted things and be able to really attack everything from every angle, you'll be prepared for pretty much anything. One thing I also like to do is do sort of hugs and hucks in like a 4-2-1 type of motion. So four of these, then right to these, all right? Then two, then one. So they're two contrasting motions. So if you can train your hand to be relaxed enough to go back and forth between those, you're set up for what music usually gives you. It's not usually one motion all the time. Another thing to do uh, that's similar to that too is hucks, but inverted hucks as well, where you accent the diddle. And that's gonna be playing just a regular huck and then accenting the diddle. So four of those, and then So all really kind of simple concepts with it. And this is why I rely so much of, on this as a teacher, because we can kind of teach one or two concepts, like the whole one-handed format, format, right, left, right, left, is kind of universal with whatever we're going to do. So you can take any pattern and do that. And then the students all start to understand the whole buildup. Uh, in fact, my book, the, the Next Level, is all about taking every rudiment and doing a one-handed buildup and then adding, as we've done with these guys here. Um, but it's, it's really a great teaching tool because it's a quick way to warm up. It gets all the skills involved or most of the skills involved that you're going to encounter, uh, and then able to sort of move into whatever you need to do. So this next page, this exercise, that's the last little thing of, of this little packet, the kitchen sink there. Um, the other page of that, if you could, please, that's the base and the, uh, single tenor split. Thank you. Um, so that basically takes all of these and puts them into one exercise, uh, especially teaching at the high school level. I found that I always had limited time to warm the students up. So I would create exercises that had a little bit of everything. Uh, and this one with all the flam stuff uh, called it the kitchen sink. So I certainly you can download this PDF. Uh, you're welcome to it. Um, James Courtright, who's the other name on this, he wrote the pit parts to this, which aren't included, but uh, this is something that, you know, I felt was very useful to get all of these things in one. Uh, and then we would also do a, a full sort of body movement to this too. We would do sort of plies and tendus with this, and it was all choreographed uh, as well. So the letter A section is really just a, a, a run through most of the one-handed stuff that I just covered. It always starts with the lead motion. So the first measure is the quarter notes. So I would hype the quarter notes lifting on the and because that's how you pull out of the hug. And then the hucks, the buck is the check, and then a little multimeter to get the check for uh, the huck diggers. Turn it around by doing a double paradiddle. I think the double paradiddle is a bit of a lost rudiment. Um, right, that's a fun one. It forces you to relax those taps. So I'm just going to play through the A section uh, all the way through here. One, two, ready, and two, and three, and four, and same motion. That buck, same motion for the hucks. Set up those two heights for the triple low, low triple B. Turn it around. Okay, the B section kind of deals with flam paradiddles. Flam paradiddle is a single plus a group of four. Okay, and then this incorporates also the inverted motion as well, right? Also a little bit of syncopation and timing release as well. So the letter B section all the way through, uh, four bars on the right and then four bars on the left. One, two, three, and.
And the goal there too is to really play at two heights, the whole thing as well. So we don't, you're not raising up and down as you do the different motions or more notes as you start higher or anything like that. And then the letter C section is really just putting all of that together. Um, so the first two bars are flam accent, flam tap based. The next two bars are sort of flam paradiddle and inverts. And, and then it just kind of goes from there. Um, I haven't played this in a while, so I'm gonna scoot a little closer. <laughs> uh, so here we go with just the letter C section. Um, here we go. One, two, ready, and. One more time on that. Two, ready, and. So that is the kitchen sink. Um, certainly uh, break that stuff down in there too. Uh, I love the letter C section. It feels really good to my hands because I'm going into the flam accents. Right? And I'm forcing myself again to, to put all these different motions together with it. Uh, I think a great skill test is these into the inverts, right? So being able to have that low end bounce there and then moving back into that. So that is the kitchen sink. And that kind of wraps up what I had for everybody this evening. Um, feel free to shoot me an email at any time if you have any questions that maybe you didn't get to ask for this tonight. My email is jeff at jeffqueen.com. Um, yeah, happy to be uh, sharing this stuff with you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, it was really, really great stuff. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Thank you, PAS. Thank you for doing these things. These are awesome resources for everyone. Uh, it's certainly nice to connect virtually with, with all of you out there, and I uh, hope everybody stays safe and healthy. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Uh, hey, listen, tune in next week. We'll have Mark Riley from the Old Guard here uh, doing some, some more stuff. So thanks, everybody, and have a great Friday night.